Hi, I'm Jim Harmer from ImprovedPhotography.com, and this is Dustin Olson, who put on his uh, business card that he's the shutter release technician. Shutter release technician here to improve photography. <laughs> and uh, today we're talking about the sharpness of your photos. It's something that we see especially from our online photography class students is they'll send us photos for a mid-class portfolio review and I mean nine times out of ten the photos aren't crystal clear. It, we also see it especially when we're judging uh, photography contests. Mm -hmm. We'll get 200 entries and I just sit at my computer and I just say delete not sharp, delete not sharp, delete not sharp, <laughs> delete not sharp. Okay that one's sharp, let's at least consider it. Uh, you know, <laughs> It really, it's something that most photographers don't even notice until you've been around photography for, I think, about two years. Mm -hmm. Until you're really used to seeing what a sharp photo looks like and a just little bit soft photos. I'm not talking about like just way out of there blurry, but you just, it's just not quite crisp. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about today, how to get your photos just absolutely crisp. And if you walk through these seven things that we've set out here, uh, we guarantee your photos are going to be crisp because these are the only seven ways that we can think of uh, that would cause uh, sharpness or clarity problems in your photography. Yeah, the, probably the biggest reason that people will ask us why there's a blurriness factor in their photo and that's because it's due to improper focusing. And that's, in your, in your viewfinder you have focus points and Depending on how you use your focus points, you might have it adjusted to, on the background, you forgot to move it to where your model is. And so your background gets focused, but not your model. Or oftentimes in the entry level DSLR cameras is you will leave it in the center and you'll just focus and you'll recompose. And, and that's great, that's really quick, because oftentimes these focus points don't land exactly on your model's eyes or the, the part of the photo that you're trying to take. And so you just focus and recompose. But in between focusing and recomposing, maybe you let your finger off halfway on the shutter and you lose the lock on the focus, or you maybe tilt back just a little bit and you bring the photo out of focus from there. So there's a couple of variables of when you're adjusting your focus point or recomposing your shot to, to get it, or you've got your camera all the way out here for some reason and you just kind of tilt a little bit. Yeah, and that's kind of what uh, prompted us to do this video today. We see this thing, this, I mean, every single day we send an email about sharpness to our students, uh, to some student who sent in a photo. But uh, what kind of prompted us to do this today is that a student uh, had a very high quality camera, had a very expensive professional lens, and the photo just looked soft. Mm -hmm. uh, e even with great gear, it just looked soft. And so I called Dustin over to look at my computer and I said, now what's the problem here? Let's walk through this. You know, why doesn't this photo look quite clear? And we zoomed in on it and you could see the focus point was on the woman's jacket mm -hmm. and not on their eye. And uh, just by that little, I mean, just a six inch movement, a foot movement in, in where the focus point was and the whole photo just didn't look right. When you look at a photo, your, your eye viewing it immediately goes to the person in the photo's eye. That's just where we're trained to look at human beings. And so if that isn't just absolutely crisp, the whole photo isn't going to look right. And that was the case here, but it happens all the time mm -hmm. uh, with, with all photographers as we're learning. So we, uh, so we need to have that focus point precisely on the person's eye that we're shooting. Or in landscape photography, we'll usually want it about a third up from the bottom of the photo. Make sure your focus is exact. Just focusing on the head is a no-go. It's gotta be right on the person's eyeball. Uh, you know, if you focus on the nose, there is a difference between the nose, the cheek, and the eye if you're shooting with shallow depth of field. It's going to be noticeable. So improper focus is the biggest mistake we see. It just takes a while to learn it. The second is not sharpening your photo. If you, if you shoot in raw, then your, your photo will come out really soft. And we see a lot of people who edit the color and they change the contrast and many other things in Lightroom or Photoshop, but they don't actually sharpen the picture. And your photos will all look soft if you don't sharpen a raw image. Now, if you shoot in JPEG, mm -hmm. your camera's already doing it for you. Uh, when you shoot a JPEG, it's applying a little bit of sharpness before you actually see the photo. 
So if you shoot RAW, you must sharpen every single photo. If you shoot JPEG, you probably should be adding a little bit of, of sharpening, uh, depending on what your in-camera settings are. Mm -hmm. So once you're done sharpening, that's usually a good like finishing effect when you're working on your photos. Yeah, it should be the last thing you do in your mm -hmm. workflow after everything else you sharpen. Exactly. And the next thing is camera blur, which is, there's a difference between motion blur, but camera blur is when the camera itself is moving to cause the blur in the photo. Uh, it could start with a slower shutter speed. Uh, many of you are using aperture priority and you will focus and meter, meter the light in a dark area so it slows the shutter speed way down. And as you take that photo, you probably push the shutter speed button really hard and then it just moves the camera or the wind catches it, just a number of things will, will cause the... Even just the natural trembling in your hand. I mean, hold your hand out. Mm -hmm. You can't hold it perfectly steady. It moves a little bit. And that, when we're talking about fine details, like seeing the threads in people's clothing, just that little movement is going to blur that detail out. Exactly. So a slower shutter speed will definitely reveal the movement of your camera um, to do that. So getting a, a shutter speed that's fast enough to not capture the moment without taking into account that you're actually moving the camera is yeah, important. Yeah, and, and I guess the, the reason the shutter speed kind of plays in there is that we all are going to shake and kind of move the camera just slightly when we press the shutter button. So having a fast enough shutter speed kind of compensates for those little mistakes that we all make. Mm -hmm. But be very careful with how soft you press the shutter button. There's a little post usually in front of the shutter button that we turn the camera on and off with. The best technique is to put your finger on that on off button and then just kind of roll it back onto the shutter. That'll move the camera very, very little. Mm -hmm. In addition to camera blur, which is you moving, there's also motion blur, which is the subject of the photo moving. If you're taking a photo of a landscape and the tree is blowing, well, it's going to look blurry. Or if you're taking a photo of a person, the person just naturally moving, smiling as you're taking the picture, flipping their hair around, that motion can cause blur. The only way to fix it is by having a faster shutter speed. So if someone's whipping their hair around, you know, a model in the studio kind of really playing with their hair, eh, maybe you're going to need a shutter speed of 1 320 or 1 500th. If you're taking a, a sports portrait of somebody running at you full speed, that's eh, you're going to be need to be at 1 1,000th of a second. Just a normal portrait, everyone's moving. Like how we're sitting now, if you were to take a portrait of us, I still wouldn't usually want to be below one one hundredth of a second because we just naturally move mm -hmm. a little bit and shake. So that's motion blur. Make sure your shutter speed matches the situation. Yep. And then the fifth thing that we're going to talk about is your junky lens. And not to offend those who have gone out to get the more affordable lens, I started with a, a really cheap lens. All of us did. All I of started us did. with cheap gear. Yeah. And. <laughs> It's, I mean, I wanted to get into photography and I knew I wanted a zoom lens, a, a, just a standard telephoto lens. Like, I wanted different lenses, but I was on a budget. So with that, because I didn't spend as much money on the really expensive lenses, they also put the more, the cheaper glass in the camera, in the lens as well. And so that reduces the quality of the image that you'll be able to produce uh, in your camera is all because of the lens that you're buying. Now. With time, and the, the more photos that you look at, you'll see how sharp they can be and the, or the different quality you can get with just a different lens on your camera. So keep that in mind that with time, your photos will probably be a little softer than you want them to be, all because of the lens that you have on your camera. And keep in mind that just because you don't have expensive glass doesn't mean you can't take very, very sharp pictures. If you look carefully and read reviews, we have recommendations at improvephotography.com, you can find very good lenses for not a lot of money. Uh, so that will definitely help. And the other thing is, if you have inexpensive lenses that don't have great quality, then one thing you can do is to, be, is to learn a couple techniques to get the most out of your lens. If you're shooting, let's say, a Nikon 55 to 250, it's a very common lens or a Canon 75 to 300 would be comparable. Uh, both of those lenses are fair, but not real sharp. And so two things you can do to improve the quality of those, of those lenses is to one, don't use all the way zoomed out or all the way zoomed in. Those are gonna usually be a little bit softer. 
So, you know, just pull back a little bit. Instead of 55 millimeters, shoot at 75. Uh, and then the other thing you can do is don't shoot at the extreme apertures. So if your lens goes down to f5.6, you know, step it up a little bit to maybe f7.1, and you'll see a pretty significant increase in the sharpness of your photos. So there are a lot of things you can do to take advantage and get sharp, sharp results from even inexpensive lenses if you don't want to fork out the dough. Mm -hmm. And even getting into a little bit of flash photography with your cheaper lenses helps bring in the detail that you're often missing. Yeah. With your photos. Also helps with your shutter speed because the flash pops so fast. Yeah. And the next thing is using too shallow a depth of field. Uh, that's a mistake that we see, especially in kind of the intermediate photographers. Not, not so much with the beginners, but with, with the intermediate photographers who have learned, you know, to use those lower apertures, f2.8, mm -hmm. f1.8. Uh, they start using those all the time, those wide open apertures which is great, it, there's not a problem with using that unless it's so shallow that it's not enough depth of field for even the head. So let's say I'm <laughs> shooting at 200 millimeters, that's a long focal length, I'm at f2.8 and I'm only standing, you know, two yards away from the person I'm taking a picture of. If with those, uh, with those uh, settings there, you're gonna have extremely shallow depth of field, so much so that the eye may be in focus and the nose is out of focus or the hair on the back of the head. You can always see uh, when you're shooting women, kind of these wispy hairs in the back, uh, you can always see those are blurred out if the photographer used too shallow a depth of field. It's not like the biggest mistake you can make, no. but it's another one of those things that uh, can cause problems. But, but I guess it does make a big mistake if you're shooting a group photo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because groups, I mean, uh, even couples for engagements. You want that blurry background because it looks really good, but the guy staying six inches behind the girl is just not in focus. And mm -hmm. then the shot's kind of a waste because the two most important people. Yeah, I, I am always, I've learned to be very careful with that when I'm mm -hmm. shooting engagement photos. You know, you'll have whatever, the wife on the left and the husband on the right. And if the husband's head is just a little bit behind, it's going to, one's going to look sharp and the other won't. So you have to train them to stick their neck way out so that their <laughs> eye levels are about equal. Especially if you're shooting, you know, a family portrait or a, a group of people. If you focus on the person in the middle or in the back, the guys in the front are going to look way out of focus. So mm -hmm. you have to learn to focus on the front person. People always fight with me and say you're supposed to focus <laughs> a third into the group. You know, mm. a lot of experience and a lot of shoots have taught us that you just have to focus on the person in the front or it will not look right. Yeah, and then increase your f-stop number so that you yeah. can maximize the detail and the depth in the photo. Because even if you do focus on the person in the front, having that low f-stop number just won't help you at all. Yeah, if you shoot a group with, you know, three layers of people and you're at f2.8, f3.5, it's just not going to work. You got to get up to 7.1 or whatever, depending on your lens yeah. and how far away you are from them. But I mean, generally that's where we'd want to be. Exactly. And the last thing that you probably haven't thought about is the diopter that's right next to your viewfinder on your camera. It's very, such a small like feature, right? It's, mm -hmm. You probably didn't even notice it was there. But what it does is it adds kind of like a prescription type um, adjustment to what your viewfinder, so it's as if you're wearing glasses. Uh, for myself, I wear glasses, but I don't, I, my vision's not bad enough to justify contacts. So I adjust my diopter to increase the, the prescription, I guess, is mm -hmm. what we'll call it, on, in my viewfinder, so that I don't have to wear my glasses as I look through the camera. And keep in mind, if you do adjust it, you do it too much, you'll give yourself a headache when you look through your camera. Do it too little, it might actually blur the photo. And if, you're, if you have to manual focus, if you don't quite trust your autofocus for some reason or is having a trouble, that diopter can really affect whether or not you're gonna get that photo in focus. Right, and just to be clear, the changing the diopter changes absolutely nothing about the photo itself. What it's changing is the way that the, the, way that the picture looks to you as you're looking through the viewfinder. Mm -hmm. So getting it correct is important so that you can do things as you're shooting that will make the photo look right. Otherwise, it might look great in the camera, 
or it might look a little bit off in the camera, but actually you're, you're shooting right and then you change something which is gonna mess it up. So make sure mm -hmm. your diopter is dialed in for you. It's gonna be different for every person. And if it's dialed in for you, it'll help you to see in camera whether you're doing things right or not so right. Yeah, so it's not like your, your eye doctor, he can't you know, do thick prescriptions you know, in your camera. So it has limitations. Mm -hmm. when you're working with that. Yeah, it's kind of minor adjustments. Minor adjustments. So thanks for joining us yeah, on these for uh, us. seven deadly sins of seven, getting blurry photos. Seven deadly <laughs> sins. So don't forget, go through each of these steps and just as a reminder, it's improper focusing, uh, not sharpening in post-processing or in your camera, camera blur, motion blur, junky lenses, your depth of field might be too shallow, and your diopter. Get all yeah. those things right and you're going to have really great looking, clear, sharp, crisp photos that will be the envy of all the photography forums. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks.